the ghost of Batan, Arthur Wormoth, a one-man army with 116 kills. From the title alone, this sounds insane. Before we do jump in this video, like 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you're one of the 80%, I appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button down below. I've also been posting extra content to my Patreon page. Link to my Patreons in the description. But yeah, let's jump in this and check out this one-man army. If you were to ask me to name one person off the top of my head that should have been awarded the Medal of Honor but wasn't, it would be a toss-up between Jake McNasty McNeese okay. and this guy. Ah, oh, this is gonna be good. Today we're talking this about the one-man good. army, Arthur Wermuth, or as the Imperial Japanese Army referred to him, the Ghost of Bataan. All right, important background info. December 7th, 1941, Japan attacks America at Pearl Harbor. Okay, right. everybody knows what Pearl Harbor is, but what most people don't realize is that while Japan was attacking America, they were also simultaneously launching attacks on pretty much every other nation and island in the Pacific. Hong Kong, okay. Wake Island, Guam, Malaya, Singapore, Thailand, all of these nations and islands would fall to the Japanese within three months. Oh, all wow. All of them except for one the Philippines. If you don't know, at this point in time, the Philippines is actually a territory under the United States of America who had assumed control of the Philippines from Spain after the Spanish-American War in 1898. Because of- Wait, did you say it's still like a part of America? All of them except for one of America who had assumed- If you don't know, at this point in time, the Philippines is actually a territory under the United States of America- who Oh, is it not now? The Philippines from Spain after the Spanish American War in 1898. Because of that, there was already 22,000 soldiers there. Now, don't get me wrong, they weren't expecting to get attacked. The majority of these soldiers, 12,000 of them, are non-combat related jobs or right. they're Filipino reservists. Okay. But that other 10,000 was the Philippine scouts. And I cannot stress to you enough that these guys are absolute gangsters. They were oh, founded wow. in 1901 by the US Army. It is essentially Filipino and Filipino American soldiers being led by American officers. And they are experts in guerrilla, anti-guerrilla, and jungle warfare. These are the guys that fought the Tan Sung rebels during the Moro Rebellion. They are literally the men that America's patron saint of hole punching, John Moses Browning, created the Colt 45 1911 They are the direct <laughs> predecessor of the Philippines' current special forces, the Scout Rangers, and they are probably some of, if not the last people on the planet that you want to fight in the jungle. And one of the American- Aye, right, right, okay. From that alone, they're badass, bro. They're badass. Leading these men is none other than Arthur Wermuth, son of a World War I veteran that grew up in Chicago. For high school, he would attend Northwestern Military Academy. And after graduating from there, he would be denied by West Point because the only thing he excelled at in life was football and winning fist fights. His football <laughs> coach said that defensively, he was a tough man to get through, and offensively, many points were scored through holes that he opened. Despite being rejected right. by West Point, he still wanted to be a military officer, so he would go to college at Loyola University in Chicago, where he would join the ROTC program and get his bachelor's degree in bacteriology, which would later huh? become known as microbiology. So after graduating from college and receiving his commission as a military officer, he would write the United States War Department requesting to get put on active duty. He would get accepted and sent over to the Philippines where he would arrive in January of 1941 to train with the Philippine scouts. Fast forward 11 months later, the Japanese show up and they attack. Filipino and American forces Yo, are not you're ready. telling me, you're telling, because we know where this is going, bro. You're telling me he goes there and trains for 11 months and he ends up becoming an absolute beast. Like, we don't know the story fully, but he becomes a beast that takes on 116, gets 116 kills by himself. Okay. Fast okay. forward 11 months later, the Japanese show up and they attack. Filipino and American forces are not ready. They are outmanned, outgunned in every conceivable way. At this point, leadership decides their best bet is to pool all of their resources and have everybody move to the Bataan Peninsula. They right. are essentially going to back themselves into a corner, draw one line in the sand, and desperately try to hold that line long enough for American reinforcements to show up. Oh, wow. It's not a great plan, but it's pretty much the only thing they can do. Scary. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's actually a problem with that. The Japanese are advancing so fast that they're going to be able to cut off the route to Bataan before everybody can actually make it there. So now- Yo, and he in jet sprinting, bro? Now, Arthur Wermuth and the rest of the 57th Infantry Regiment are gonna have to go and fight the Japanese on the front line, desperately trying to hold them off long enough for all the other people to retreat. General wow. Wainwright gives them the order to dig in and hold, and that's exactly what Arthur and his men do. At this point, Arthur is in command of Delta Company of the 57th Infantry Regiment, which is roughly 150 Philippine scouts. And for the next two weeks, 
they go toe to toe with the Japanese army, desperately trying to hold them off long enough for everybody else to retreat. This That's is how crazy. Arthur and his men would spend Christmas of 1941, dealing heavy losses to the enemy. But by New Year's, they had faced the same thing and endured heavy losses themselves. By the first week of January 1942, Arthur's 150 men had dwindled down to just 37. At this what? point, it became clear that they were not going to be able to hold the front line, at which point they were ordered to retreat back to Bataan. But Arthur had a plan to slow down the Japanese even further. Arthur volunteers to sneak back into a city that recently fell to the Japanese by himself because in that city there's a wooden bridge and that wooden bridge is going to prove vital for the Japanese to quickly move troops further inland. And if Arthur can get rid of it, it is going to severely hamper their ability to do so. Bro, you telling me his idea is to go by himself, by himself into Japanese now claim territory, right? They, they, they've took it over. And to blow up a bridge so they can't... Bro, what a legend. What a le <laughs> You would be... I would be terrified of even coming up with that plan and going by myself, bro. So, Arthur is going to sneak into the city by himself with demo charges, his Thompson submachine gun, and two five-gallon jugs of gasoline. He is then Bro. going to make his way to Main Street under the cover of night, dump the gasoline all over the buildings, and light Main Street on fire. Once all the buildings in Main Street are engulfed in flames, that is a signal <coughs> to the Philippine scouts miles away that they're going to start dropping artillery on that area, and Arthur is going to use okay. that as a distraction to make his way over to this bridge, place some demo charges, and blow it up. And right, that's pretty smart. much exactly what happens. Arthur sneaks into town, manages to light Main Street on fire, waits for the fire to grow a little bit, at which point Arthur knows the artillery fire is coming right on top of him any second and he just has to make a run for this bridge right, he's got this bridge it. Is wide out in the open right next to main street and he is about to run essentially down main street towards a bridge that's being guarded and there is hundreds of japanese soldiers everywhere all right that seems easy enough thankfully most of them are distracted by the fact that most of main street is on fire and not a lot of them take notice of the fact that there is now a 190 pound american sprinting down main street towards the bridge but eventually a couple of them would take notice and begin firing at arthur and he would be struck in the calf and fall to the ground oh my bro <clears throat> we haven't even got to where he starts killing people bro and you're telling me he's done this and now he's been shot Oh, this story is going to get mad. And right then is when the artillery rounds started dropping. And as soon as the artillery rounds started dropping, Arthur waited there for a second. And then when he thought they were all distracted again, he got up and continued to run towards the bridge. He then no proceeded way. to place the demolition charges, blowing up the bridge before disappearing back in the jungle and making his way back to his men. So Arthur... Bro got shot, pretended to be dead for a second, and still did the... Ju oh my, no way. His men make it to Baton. At this point, you have to put yourself in Arthur's shoes. He is one of the highest ranking officers on the ground. He was just in charge of 150 men two weeks ago, and only 37 of them survived. Right. That's not necessarily his fault. He was placed in a completely unwinnable situation, but ultimately, he's not going to feel great about himself losing that many of his men. Yeah, that's He's been tough. living in the Philippines for almost a year, training with the Philippine scouts. He's an expert in camouflage, an expert in jungle warfare, and an expert in guerrilla warfare tactics. And he decides that rather than lose any more of his men, he is going to go out past the front line into enemy territory by himself and terrorize the enemy. So that's what he does. He sleeps Whoa. during the day and every night he grabs his Thompson submachine gun, two Colt 45 1911s and a bunch of grenades and heads off into the jungle by himself to utilize hit and run tactics against the Japanese conducting guerrilla warfare. No and way, no way, no way, no way. Yo, imagine being the Japanese and like, cause you, you'll be friends with the people around you, right? And they just start missing. Like, they, they just start disappearing every night. And it's this guy. Sleeps in the day, come out at night, by himself. Oh, nah. On one of these missions, he's a couple miles into enemy territory from the front line when he hears a bunch of Japanese soldiers coming up on him. So he quickly hides in some bushes and camouflages himself. Right. And 30 Japanese soldiers, an entire platoon, comes walking past. One of them almost steps on him, and he's just laying there, dead quiet, trying not to breathe, and the troops are making their way towards the front line. And Arthur knows he has to do something because they're either going to launch an attack or they're getting reconnaissance to scout the front line. He either can't. way... These guys gotta go. It's he knows people. even if he pops up with the element of surprise from behind them with his top <clears> set <throat> machine gun, he's still gonna lose that fire. Yeah. Fight. So he does the only thing he can think to do, and that is to get up and start walking in the column with these guys as if he was one of them. So he is literally following in this Japanese column. No, there's no way. Bro, there's no way. There's no way. There is no 
Why? He's mad. He's mad. He's mad. How would they not notice? Right, so he does the only thing he can think to do, and that is to get up and start walking in the column with these guys as if he was one of them. So I am confused. Do they have like paint on their face, like the Japanese and him, like similar, pa I like similar kit, bro? You're telling me he's an American man, right? And he has gone in a Japanese group, right? They're gonna have different uniform, unless they got similar uniforms. Sim Bro, how, how would they not realize? So he is literally following in this Japanese column, walking through the jungle towards the front line, at which point he decides, hey, I gotta make sure these guys don't look back and actually try to get a look at me because I'm wearing a different uniform. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They're gonna notice. So he decides that every time one of them steps on a twig or makes a noise, he's gonna shh. So they be more quiet, just reassuring that like, oh, that's obviously not an enemy behind me. It's somebody trying to get me to be quiet because they're on my side. Arthur Wermuth has... This guy is just a different breed, bro. This guy's next level. He's next level crazy. He, he's next level. Just switched gears from John Rambo to Bugs Bunny fucking with Elmer Fudd. And he follows <laughs> these guys through the jungle for miles, just shushing them the entire way. And then when they finally get up to the front line, Arthur knows that he has to do something. He has to alert his guys that they're about to attack. So he does the only thing he could think to do. He quietly pulls the pin from one of his grenades and then acts like he tripped on something, stumbling to the man in front of him, grabbing a hold of him for balance. And when he grabs a hold of him, he hands the grenade to him right in the guy's chest. That guy obviously grabs it and Arthur runs off into the jungle. The Japanese soldier's like, wait, what? Oh God, boom, he blows up. Then Arthur turns around with his Thompson and opens fire on the rest of them. This obviously alerts his men and they start opening fire too. They completely wipe out this Japanese platoon. Oh my, oh my, bro, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is... What have I just heard? What have I just... Th if this does not have a movie, then I... Bro, th I <laughs> the movie industry is a failure, man. This guy is just pretending to be in a Japanese group, right? In different uniform, shushing them along the way to their base, yeah? And then he got close, hands, trips, hands someone a grenade, runs, Blows up, then spray. Nah. After this and other events like it, the Japanese start to fear Arthur, referring to him as the ghost of Bataan, while the American forces are referring to him as the one man army. At this That's point, crazy. he gets his notoriety, and other experienced Filipino scouts start volunteering to go out with him, but he doesn't want to lose any more men, so he keeps refusing, and he keeps refusing. And finally, there's one brave Filipino scout that he can't refuse because this guy will kick his ass. His name is Sergeant Crispin Jacob, AKA Jock. He is described as being six foot four, 220 pounds. And Arthur Wermuth himself said that he is half Filipino, half Oriental giant. And he begins going out on these missions with Arthur. And time after time, Jock manages to save Captain Wermuth's life. At oh, some point, wow. it becomes apparent that the Japanese are intercepting frontline communications. But here's the thing. These communications aren't done over radio. They can't just be intercepted wirelessly. These are hardwired communications with a physical wire just strung out on the ground. This okay. means that somewhere along that wire, the Japanese have tapped into it physically and Arthur Wermuth and Jock are sent out at night to investigate. So they're tracing this wire down all night long, just following this wire, following this wire, and at some point in the darkness, they lose track of it. So they're trying to refine where the wire went. They're looking, they're looking. Arthur gets his legs tangled up in a vine and he falls down. No big deal. He pulls out his knife, tries right. to cut the vine. Oh shit, wait, hold on. This is the wire. At which point he looks over to yell at Jock like, hey, I found it. And he looks and there is a ditch with a Japanese soldier and a bunch of equipment sitting in it looking at him like he's dumbfounded. Arthur <laughs> quickly draws his gun as the Japanese soldier draws his, and they have a good old fashioned quick draw contest, which Arthur wins. Arthur then quickly making it back to his feet is then tackled by two Japanese soldiers. I don't, bro. I, this story is just gonna get better and better and better, bro. Like, I'm just thinking, 
How is there not a movie called Ghost of Bataan? Like, how? It's even a good title. A good old-fashioned quick draw contest, which Arthur wins. Arthur, then quickly making it back to his feet, is then tackled by two Japanese soldiers into the ditch, one of them stabbing him with a bayonet through his arm, pinning him to the dirt wall oh. inside of his trench, at which point he yells for Jock. Jock then runs up to the edge of the trench and sees Wehrmuth inside the trench fighting off two Japanese soldiers with his arm pinned to the wall. He Ooh. takes aim with his rifle at the Japanese soldiers and then realizes that he doesn't want to accidentally hit Wehrmuth in the middle of the fight while it's still dark out. So he jumps in the trench and proceeds to beat the two Japanese soldiers to death with his rifle. He then destroys the radio equipment, helps Wehrmuth pull the bayonet out of his arm. He starts bleeding everywhere. He bandages that up and gets Wehrmuth back to the hospital, at which point the ghost of Bataan is now bed written and on doctor's orders is not allowed to leave and while all that's this going on mod. word finally makes it back to america that there's some crazy 190 pound ex-football player running around in the jungles of the philippines <laughs> showing the japanese what's up and this is the one shining piece of good news that america clings on to in the days after pearl harbor right Arthur Wermuth unknowingly becomes an overnight celebrity in america he is taking up all the headlines they are making comic books about him and his partner jock bro I need to get my hands on one of these comic books because I bet oh, I actually really do. I actually really want one. He is inside of bubblegum packets telling the story of them finding the tap in the communication line. Arthur Wermuth is now one of the first main characters in World War II fighting for America, and he is vital for overall American morale. And right, just cool. like a main character, he decides that he's not going to stay bedridden. He violates doctor's orders, checks himself out of the hospital, of course and is. gets back in the fight. At of this point, the is. Japanese have flooded the entire surrounding area with snipers that are picking off American and Filipino soldiers <coughs> day and night, and Arthur Wehrmuth has to be the man that does something about it. But considering that there's so many of them and that Jock just saved his life, he comes to the conclusion that having some friends around isn't exactly a bad idea. Right. So he starts taking volunteers to join his special anti-sniper unit, <laughs> and 84 of the meanest, most experienced Philippine scouts volunteered. Not only were these guys counter-sniping the snipers, there was also a bunch of them out in the jungle, camouflaged and hidden, waiting for the sniper to fire so they knew where he was and then they were going to come at him with machetes and colt 45s oh my oh my <laughs> i can hear the screams of the sniper now imagine being a sniper you shot and then you just see 80 people camouflaged come at you with machetes Oh my days, I've been screaming for my life. Throughout February and March of 1942, Arthur Wehrmuth, Jock, and their anti-sniper unit were credited with taking out 500 Japanese soldiers, and this is considered to be a very conservative estimate. Then in late March, what? command would ask her volunteers to do a nearly impossible mission of recapturing the high point of Mount Pukat, at which point Arthur immediately volunteered and then asked his men who of them would also like to volunteer and they all did. Arthur and his no men way. Set to try to complete this nearly impossible mission. It is a 36 hour hike through enemy territory just to get to the objective. Along that 36. Wait, hold on. I like the respect there how they all volunteered. 36 hour hike through enemy territory just to get to the objective. Along that oh, wow. 36 hour hike, they are credited with taking out an additional 65 Japanese soldiers. Then upon reaching Mount Pukat, they would launch an attack and it would fail, Arthur would lose over half of his men. Oh, Having no. failed to take the high ground at Mount Pukat, Arthur and his surviving men would retreat back to Bataan. Along the way, they would get ambushed by a machine gun position, and Arthur would be struck in the chest with machine gun fire. Arthur would then wake up in a field hospital back at Bataan, where he was informed that the bullet went through his rib into his lung, and he was now battling an infection. I would assume they didn't have antibiotics to give him, because at this point, Bataan was in rough shape. They were down to half rations, and they were running out of every supply imaginable. Oh, Desperately wow. trying to hold out long enough to get resupplied and reinforced. Arthur would remain in the hospital for 10 days, and every single day that passed, it became more and more apparent that they were losing and Japan was going to win. At this point, Arthur, against doctor's orders, with pus oozing from his chest, no still way. battling an infection, would don his gear and go back out with his men one last time. Arthur D bro, this guy? How... I don't, like, how did he not get a Medal of Honor? How, I don't get it. How? How? Arthur and his anti-sniper unit desperately tried to hold the line against the Japanese, but due to sheer overwhelming numbers, they were beaten back over and over again. And during one of their retreats on April 9th, 
Arthur would slip down the side of a cliff, smacking his head on a rock, rendered unconscious. He would again wake oh, no. up in the hospital, but this time when he awoke, he would come to find out that the Japanese had completely taken over Bataan, the Americans had been forced to surrender, and General MacArthur had fled to Australia. This is absolutely the worst possible outcome because the Imperial Japanese believe that if you surrender in battle, you lose your honor, and if you lose your honor, you are no longer human. You are subhuman and no longer eligible for human rights, which gives them the justification to treat you, to kill you. however they want. Oh, Arthur no way. Uh, is bedridden having been shot in the leg stabbed in the arm with a bayonet shot in the chest concussed and battling an infection and he is probably one of the luckiest men there because pretty much everybody else is forced to participate in the baton death march and i don't really want to get too far into what that is and what happened Wait, what but was suffice that? it to say over 30 percent of everybody else is going to die in captivity as a prisoner of war and if arthur were wait 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 what is the what is the death march Huh? They want to get too far into what that is and what happened, but suffice it to say, over 30% of everybody else is going to die in captivity as a prisoner of war. Oh, wow. And if Arthur Wormuth were also forced to go down the Bataan Death March, he would absolutely be a member of that 30% given his current condition. I can't yeah. verify this for sure, but I think the reason that they let Arthur Wormuth have a chance at surviving is because technically he never surrendered. He was fatally wounded in battle, and when he woke up, he had already been captured. So I think that maybe the Japanese didn't look down on him as subhuman because he didn't forfeit his honor. He literally fought until he lost consciousness. And and by sheer luck, he survived and woke up in captivity. No After way! After the recovery, now Major Wehrmuth would find himself being the highest ranking military officer around, making him the leader of the few remaining Americans that were lucky enough to escape the Bataan Death March. And for the next year, they are used as forced labor to build Japanese airstrips. One of the Americans under the command of Arthur was a man by the name of Elliot Smessler, who later on in life would write a book of memoirs about his time as a prisoner of war under the Japanese. In that book, he wrote this, quote, the first year of my captivity, I worked on building an airfield for the Japanese. Life wasn't bad because they were afraid of the major in charge. His name was Major Wehrmuth, and the Japanese called him Wehrmuth the Lion. Now, what? I think this is actually further evidence that the Japanese don't believe that he actually surrendered and didn't lose his honor in battle because they are still scared of him despite the fact that he is their prisoner. And he definitely... How? Yo, you have to make the craziest impact to... For them to still be scared of you, right? I, you're their prisoner! What? He didn't surrender because while Arthur and the men under his command did build the airstrip they were told to build, they sabotaged it so that the concrete would buckle underneath the weight of Japanese heavy bombers. Not no only way. damaging the airstrip, but the bombers as well. Yeah, despite being a POW <laughs> for over a year, Arthur and the men under his command are still finding a way to slow down the Japanese military. Because They're of this, legends. Arthur and the men under his command are sent to live on a hell ship known as the Oryoku Maru. Which if you don't know, a hell ship is essentially a POW camp on a boat and they are infamous for their horrific living conditions. Wow. The only thing worse than being a starving POW is being a starving POW on a boat with no shade while you're seasick. Then on January 9th, 1945, the USS Hornet, an American aircraft carrier, would mistake the hell ship for a troop transport and bomb it. This bombing would kill over 250 Americans instantly, wounding and injuring almost every other American on board, including Arthur Wehrman. Despite what? having his wounds go untreated while starving to death, Arthur still somehow managed to survive, making it to Japan to be inside of a POW camp there, where he would later be freed after Japan surrendered. When Arthur Wehrman shipped off from- Wait, how? 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 Bro, who is this guy? Americans instantly, wounding and injuring almost every other American on board, including Arthur Wehrman. Despite having his wounds go untreated while starving to death, Arthur still somehow managed to survive, making it to Japan to be inside of a POW camp there, where he would later be freed after Japan surrendered. When Arthur Wehrman shipped off no from America to the Philippines in 1941, he weighed 190 pounds. When he finally got to return home to America after World War II, he weighed only 105. He would then be awarded four Purple Hearts, the Silver Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He is credited with 116 kills and will go down in history as the one-man army of Bataan. Despite this, he credited his men, saying that 90% of what he was able to accomplish was due to the Philippine scouts and wow. that they were the best soldiers in the world. So wow. in conclusion, the fall of Wake Island and the Philippines are considered to be some of the first losses dealt to America during World War II. But in many ways, they were also some of the first victories. As stories of heroes like that of Hank Elrod and the Marines of Wake Bro, that's crazy, man. That is actually crazy. Yo, if this guy has a movie, you gotta tell me about it. What, what is it called? Because I need to watch it. That is, bro, this guy, Arthur, <laughs> oh, he's next level. Wake Island. 
and Arthur Wermuth and his Philippine scouts reached the rest of the world. It would become clear to America that this war was winnable, and it would become clear to Japan that they had a lot bigger fight on their hands than they ever anticipated. Thank you for watching. Wow, that's crazy. The channels. Go check out thefatelectrician.com. That is crazy. Black bang. Out. Yo, he told that story so good. Make sure you check him out. His link will be in the description. What a story, man. Arthur Wormov. He's just a different breed. I ain't gonna lie. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.